Praise the Lord. I welcome you this morning to today's service. Amen. Like I said on Thursday, I thank God for your life. And I, I want you to know that the Bible says it pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching, He will save them that believe. Amen. By the foolishness of preaching. And you and I are here today because of that foolishness of preaching. Amen. Because if you, if you were wise and I was wise, we know where to be today. Amen. I'm not talking about outside of um, where they claim to worship God. Many of us will be in uh, so many, not even that, that's even extreme. We'll be in uh, some of the new generation churches in the midst of uh, hundreds and thousands and be shouting, preach it, that's right, Rema, take it, I receive it. And then all that follows, amen? But thank God that by the foolishness of preaching, we are here this morning. Amen. To partake more of that foolishness. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He pleased God. And so we, we are happy with everything that pleases God. Amen. And I, I told us on Thursday that it is high time we stop shortchanging ourselves. The Bible says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. And I told us, ultimately, yes, to be carnally minded will mean physical death. Amen. And separation from God. Amen. But that death there has more to do with darkness, blindness, and all that you can think of that happens to a man when he or she is disconnected from God. Amen. So to be carnally minded is darkness. When a man is in darkness, he is blind. Are you following what I'm saying? He or she cannot see. And I told us that one of the benefits of being a fool, the Bible says, if any man seemeth wise in this world, let him first of all become what? A fool. And one of the benefits of becoming a fool is that he or she will then become wise. In other words, he or she would become discerning. Amen? And in discerning, this Bible tells us that the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. And so in becoming discerning, you now have the capacity, the ability to receive the things of the Spirit. Amen? And that capacity to receive the things of the Spirit is what separates you from the ordinary man. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you are discerning. That was the case with Jesus when he was asleep in the sheep and they came and cried out, Master, don't you care that we are perishing? And immediately he rose up and the Bible says he rebuked them. He said, O ye of little faith. Now because he was discerning. He knew that there was nothing wrong with what was happening. Are you following what I'm saying? The storm didn't mean anything. The strong wind didn't mean anything. It had to take a man who is wise, who is discerning to be able to decode that. Are you following what I'm saying? And he decoded it. And we saw the same thing happen when Paul was arrested and was on his way being taken to Rome where he was going to be prosecuted and on, on the way there was strong wind and storm and everybody feared for his life hallelujah and Paul because he was also discerning called the captain and spoke to him concerning what was happening hallelujah he knew what was happening he was discerning to know what was happening he said the angel of the Lord whom I serve and whom I belong to appeared to me and assured me that no lives will be lost. Hallelujah. Now because of his presence in that sheep, he secured the lives of all the other sailors. No wonder the Bible calls us saviors. Amen. Because by the discernment that is operational in our lives, we become saviors in our families, everywhere we, we, we come into. Amen. We are saviors. Because we have 
something that the world does not have. I follow what I'm saying. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth it. We have something that the world does not have. And I told us that many times we struggle and many times we complain and mourn because we are not the sunning. And the reason why that is the case is because we have reduced ourselves to natural men and women because a natural man does not remain in consciousness of his um, assets and his uh, surroundings and everything that is happening because when you are conscious of the power of immortality that is at work in your life amen you will know that nothing mega hallelujah no shaking yeah jesus was in control all through his life amen and so he said to be spiritually minded is life and peace life and peace so this is what you deny yourself when you relinquish what you have amen when you choose to become a natural man you relinquish this great awesome power and access that you have to the things of the spirit and a lot of people out of ignorance have relinquished that power that awesome power and when you try to reduce god to the system of the world that's what happens when you become wise in the world you are wise in the world you want to bring down god to your level amen you relinquish the power you are wise you are judging god according to the system of the world you are no longer happy because things are no longer working out for you amen you don't need to be looking at things jesus rebuked the disciples he said oh ye of little faith and so you see clearly now that discernment is being linked to faith oh ye of little faith you see discernment being linked to faith lazarus never wavered in his trust in god he remained steadfast. Hallelujah. In spite of all the challenges that he passed through, he never wavered. He never complained. He didn't ask God, why was it, was, why was it his lot to be sitting at the gate of the rich man eating crumbs? He didn't question God. I, I follow what I'm saying. But in the world that we are today, many of us will want to be like the rich man. Nobody will want to take up the position of uh, Lazarus. Even though we know fully well that the rich man did not make it into the kingdom of God. But we still want to be like the rich man. Because we always feel that we can maneuver it. Amen? We feel that we can maneuver it. But God knows better than you. That's why he said, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Until today, we are still struggling with what Jesus said. But that is the master himself speaking. And so many people want that difficulty. They, they, they want to choose that difficulty. They prefer it than living the life of Lazarus. Hallelujah. Now, how, if I ask you, how do you think that Jesus lived his life? Did he live more like the rich man or more like Lazarus? Huh? In other words, he, he did exactly what he preached. Is it not? He said it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And he consciously and deliberately made a choice to live more like Lazarus than the rich man. Now, if anybody could maneuver it, would it not be Jesus living like the rich man? If anybody could maneuver living like a rich man and still enter the kingdom of God, would it not be Jesus? Then why would he now choose to live more like Lazarus than the rich man? Life is a mystery. Amen. And that's why I keep telling us, Paul even said it. He said, don't waste your time desiring to be rich. Don't live your life desiring to be rich. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't live your life. Don't ever think that those rich folks, that their life is better than you. That is what I keep telling you all the time. The world's richest man, Bill Gates, Somebody told me, he said that when he got married and he was supposed to go for his honeymoon, they said he went to a very, very remote 
place, very, very poor area. I don't, I don't know which country is that. And of course, you know, because he's such a wealthy man, you have all these photographers, pressmen, trying to know what he's doing and everything. And they followed him around. And they became very curious. And they asked him, they, you know, they actually approached him and they asked him, they said, the gates, why, of all places to choose for your honeymoon, why would you come to this kind of swamp to celebrate your honeymoon? <laughs> and he laughed. A real life story. Read, you can Google it and you see. Google uh, where did uh, Bill Gates spend his uh, honeymoon. You will see what I'm saying. It's not a story. And they asked him, they said, why, of all places, why would you choose to come to the swamp to celebrate your honeymoon? And he said, I have all the money in the world that I, 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 I could ever desire to have. And I could afford anything that I want in life. He said, but this life in this slum is what my money cannot buy me. He <laughs> eh? said, so this life in this slum is what my money cannot buy. And so I want to leave it. Because my money cannot buy it. And you're wondering, the most richest man, this is what he has to say. And here you are, every day you, are, you won't allow us to hear. I'm just believing God. <laughs> People who are already there, you don't need to believe God. <laughs> eh? I already seen the vanity of it all. That's why the man channeled all his money to charity. And you're wondering whether it's true or false. And he's not leaving anything for his children. The Bible says wisdom cried in the streets, crying everywhere. But the people don't want to pay attention because they have been deceived. That's why the Bible talked about the, the people that the word was choked in their lives. He said they were choked because of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And if Jesus didn't think it was that serious, he would have played around with uh, the lifestyle of the rich man. Is it not? But he knew the consequences. He said the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world choked the world. The truth of the matter is that there is no spirituality about riches. The Bible says, they that desire to be rich, they will fall into many diverse temptations, huh? which drown men in what? In perdition. He said the love of money is the root of all evil. He said whilst many coveted after that money, they have done what? They have erred from the faith. The consequence of desiring to be rich is that you will err from the faith. Amen? That's the consequence. The consequence of becoming rich is that you will err from the I was discussing with a friend the other day and, you know, we were just talking and I, and I said, listen, my friend, I don't even want to go there, but who, 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 who amongst the rich men that you know who became rich without soiling his or her hands? I say, even you seated here, the money you, you have, don't you know how you got it? All the dealings and all the backhand and everything that you did and you are here telling me, God, which God? He started laughing. I said, which God? He said, worst many coveted after have done what? Erred from the faith. The consequence of that coveting after it is that you will err from the word faith. If you want to talk about corporate organizations, I've worked in a corporate organization and I can tell you more about corporate organization. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, people who work in these places, they pay them a lot. They pay them a lot of money to do what? Do you know what they are doing? What are they doing? Put me anywhere. There is no corporate organization that is not stealing one way or the other. Do you understand what I'm saying? One way or the other, they are stealing. And their workers do that in, in agreement so that they, at the end of the day, they get their fat pay. They say he has a good job, a, a good paying job. Do you know that he's the accountant? What is he doing there as the accountant? <laughs> what is he doing in that place? Why, why are they paying him that big money? <laughs> he, say, he's, 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 he has a good job. Which good job? He said, what many converted after have done what? Have erred from the faith. No person who goes after making money, who does not soil his or her hands in the process. That is one. Oh, then when that money comes, eh, then the second stage of 
what the Bible says will begin to happen. <laughs> and you cannot stop it. There's no spirituality that can stop it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is no spirituality that can stop it. So that is part of the consequences of all these things that the Bible is warning each and every one of us. And that's why our heart, our love, our concentration, and everything should be Christ. Amen. He said, O ye of little faith. So faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, tells us that faith is the substance of things who for the evidence of things not seen. Now, those things that are hoped for are the things of the Spirit. The things that have been received in the Spirit. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So, that which is hoped for has to do with the things of the Spirit. And so, when you receive from the Spirit, you know that it is a done deal. That's why the Bible says the elders received a good report as a consequence. For it is impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to do what? To please God without faith. Amen? The Bible says that through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things that were made were made of things that were not seen. So all these things came from the Spirit. Now the reason why the word of God has been given to us, the Bible says that we may be able to know the truth rightly dividing the word. Now, the reason why the word has been given to us is such that when we receive those things from the Spirit, there will be a witness confirming that this is from the Spirit. Amen. Because we have a reference point called the scriptures. Amen. Do you see why there is need for you to know the scriptures? It's a study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing what? The word of truth. Amen. So this is why you study the Bible. This is what, why you study. So that when information begins to come from the spirit, you will be able to divide. That's when you are able to know that this is coming from the Spirit and this is not coming from the Spirit. And that's why you can decode. It's easy for you to decode whether this is coming from the Spirit or not. Because every day, stuff keeps coming. But how do you discern which one is the Spirit and which one is not? Including the so-called good, good stuff in quote, amen. And then when you walk in the spirit, you'll be able to know which one is good and which one is not good. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> because you have a reference point. You don't get carried away. Somebody calls you on the phone and begins to tell you all manner of jazz. <laughs> and then you say to in your, in your heart, why would even people believe such rubbish? You say, I'm working in NNPC. Um, there is this contract now that they want to give out. They're just looking for somebody who will do this, do that. And you know some people believe such things. And then somebody will sit there and say, oh, no, oh, oh, okay, oh, okay, how they use. Praise the Lord. There was one, one time I, I was in Lagos, you know, and um, I suddenly got a test message. And, of course, when I get such test messages, I delete them instantly. But this one had the uh, MTN uh, brand name, you know, with it. So I said, okay, this one must be, looks authentic. Let me even call and find out what it's all about. Because they left a number. And I called the number. And... It was a lady that picked the call. Come and see the grammar this lady was blowing. And in trying to decode uh, what is happening, would this be real or not? I couldn't reconcile the lady with that kind of grammar she was speaking and relate her to 419. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> this is somebody that is 
highly intelligent. And you, you wonder what can she be? What could she be? So in my heart, I almost got uh, convinced that this is for it. <laughs> almost. And then I said, let me even call my friend to find out more about this. Uh, I, I, have a, I, I had a friend who was working you know, into communications. And I told him and I said, please, what do you know about this thing? And he laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. I said, ah, that's the new trend now. That's the new trend. They use uh, people with uh, degrees and masters to work as a uh, telephone operator so that uh, when you call them, you will believe that what they are saying is true. And even after he said that to me, I was still not convinced that this was a forward. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? Now, we are talking about things of the world and how difficult sometimes it will be difficult for you to decode the fraud that is behind what is what you're seeing. Are you getting it? So, that is the same way it is with the things of the spirit. That if you're not careful, you will not be able to decode them. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, that's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this is the reason why... You know, when somebody begins to talk to you about Python and all the rest of them, if you don't have information, you'll be carried away. Are you getting it? Somebody was telling me, I, I was trying to, you know, let some people know, uh, you know, some truth about Titan. And someone kept on insisting that, um, I, you know, that I just believe in, in, in it, you know, and it works for me. And I said, it's not about what works. Amen. Because when you look at what works, so many things work. Amen. It's about doing that which is right. But people struggle with stuff like that. So you don't have the information, you will just believe in um, in rubbish. Praise the Lord. That is the truth. You, I mean, before True Vine Fellowship, you will agree with me that a lot of this stuff, we believed in it. And we actually practiced it. Amen. But how come that today we are not doing that? Because we have known better. Amen. The segment has come. And we are able to compare the spiritual with the spiritual. And so we can see clearly that these things don't uh, follow through. So faith has to do with the substance of things hoped for. It is only when you have clear information and you know what is you're hoping for and when those things are, come from the spirit, they have to relate with what you are hoping for. If they don't relate with what you are hoping for, you sift them out. It's easy for you to sift them out because they don't relate with what you are hoping for. Go with me to that Hebrews chapter 11. We we'll read from verse 4. It said, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Now, Abel received discernment. Amen? He had discernment, and he was able to receive the things of the Spirit concerning offering. Can you see how he was able to do it? When he received the things of the Spirit, he carried it out. And the Bible says he obtained a witness as a consequence that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Amen. This is how it works. So what a magic dinner this thing. You receive stuff from the spirit. But a natural man will not be able to receive. Amen. The Bible says we are of God and we have the spirit of God that we may know that which freely belongs to us. Amen. It was the spirit that revealed to Abel what kind of offering to give to God. Now, in verse 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see dead and was not found because God tra had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How did Enoch please God? He lived the life of the Spirit. In other words, he was receiving information from the Spirit. He was receiving the things of the Spirit, and as he was receiving it, he was carrying it out. 
And the Bible says he had this testimony that he pleased God. I'm telling you why you struggle. Amen. This is the reason why you and I struggle. He said, but without faith, it is, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Did you see that? It without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. Amen. Do you understand? How do you, how do you believe that he is? You can only do that if you are willing and ready to receive from the things of the Spirit. You cannot receive the things of the Spirit if you do not believe that he is there. Are you following what I'm saying? You receive the things of the Spirit because you believe that he is there. If you don't believe that he is, you, know, you will not receive anything. And even, even if any information comes your way, you will reject it. But because you believe that he is, you are now receiving that information. That's why he said, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And not just that he is, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Who are those guys or, uh, that are diligently seeking him? They are the ones that are receiving those things of the Spirit and are ready to allow those things to take place in their lives. Are you following what I'm saying? And he says, he's a rewarder of them that diligently do what? Seek him. So, in your life, that is what you need to be doing. Hallelujah. That is what you need to be doing. And that's why you must you must have a clear channel concerning these things of the spirit. You must have the capacity. And that's what the Bible keeps talking about, growing in the knowledge of God. This is why you need to grow in the knowledge of God. So that you may be able to receive the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Did you hear just what I said now? The reason why God will have you to grow in his knowledge and in his grace is for you to be able to have the capacity to receive the things of the spirit. You saw clearly how that Enoch was able to receive these things and the Bible says he had a testimony that he pleased God. That is what you need to do. That is all that you need to do to receive these things of the spirit. And what are the things of the spirit? What are they meant to be doing in your life? They are the things that perfect you for the kingdom of God. Just like Jesus received his own things of the spirit and was sharing with the, with the apostles. What were those things? The Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered and in the process became perfect. Hallelujah. Your perfection is packaged in the things of the spirit. Everything about your life is packaged in the things of the spirit. So it matters for you to have the capacity to receive those things. If you deny yourself that capacity, you are injuring yourself in eternity. Are you following what I'm saying? So it matters that you have what it takes to receive the things of the Spirit. A lot of people lay emphasis on what is happening here on earth. Amen. A lot of us lay emphasis on what is happening here on earth. No. What is happening here on earth is nothing. What matters or what counts is what will happen to you in eternity. That's why Jesus said, it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God lame or with one eye than go to hell with two hands, two legs, and two eyes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, in other words, he's telling you that whatever that is happening here is inconsequential. But unfortunately, we are so tied up about what is happening here. We are so concerned. We are so drawn in by the things that we are seeing, the things that are happening here, and we forget that this thing is all about eternity. Amen. It's all about eternity. So he says it's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Did he reward uh, Lazarus? Do you think that Lazarus sought him diligently? Yeah? Yes, he did. Under the circumstances that he found himself. Yeah? It would only mean a man who is diligent in seeking God who will be able to overcome such a situation and still enter the kingdom of God. It's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. 
It takes it takes understanding of the things of the spirit to diligently seek God. It takes a man who also is desirous of diligently seeking him to hear what we are preaching today like when i started telling you guys about what apostle paul wrote he said do not desire to be rich it takes a man a woman who is diligently seeking god not to have desire to be rich in this world that we are living yeah in this world it takes a man who is diligently seeking god not to desire to be rich not to love the world and the things in the world but he said he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him he said if anyone will come to god he must first of all believe that he is for without faith it is impossible to please god now, there is no way you can please God if you do not have the capacity to receive the things of the Spirit. Because in the things of the Spirit are where the plans of God for your life have been coded. So, when you don't receive them, you cannot please God. Is it difficult for you to understand? That's why I say, without faith, it is impossible for you to please God. You can't please God. It's not possible. The only time you'll be able to please God is when you have the capacity to receive the things of the Spirit. That's why the Bible talked about Jesus. It said, as it is written of, the, of me in the volume of thy book, I have come to do thy will. And so when the will of God was being outlined to him, he did not reject it. He received it. And thinking that he... The disciples were in the same frequency with him. He decided to share the vision with them. <laughs> and of course, Peter reacted. Amen. He had already received the things. And he was sharing. And there was obvious reaction. Because they were not in the same frequency with him. Now, that's why he says, A man without faith cannot please him. Because you do not have the capacity to decode the things of the spirit. That's what it is. And that's why God desires you to grow in the knowledge and in the grace of God. So that you will have this capacity to de discern the things of the spirit. Because those things that has to do with the spirit are everything about your life. If they were about the life, life of Jesus, what about you? Are you getting what I'm saying? As it is written of me in the volume of thy book, I have come to do thy will. And so the will of God is coded in the things of the Spirit. And so when you discern the things of the Spirit, you have decoded the will of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. That's how it works. That's how to do the will of God. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of God and to finish it. He said, I and the Father are one. Whatever I see my Father do, that's what I do. Whatever I see my Father say, that's what I say. How does he do that? By the things of the Spirit that he receives. So, the things of the Spirit are actually what the father is saying and what the father is doing and so that's why if any man is without faith if any man is without the capacity to receive the things of the spirit that man that woman cannot please god that is what faith is faith is the capacity to receive the things of the spirit that's what faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is simply the capacity that a man, a woman has to receive the things of the Spirit. So when you do not have faith, the Bible says you cannot please God. So a man without faith is a natural man. And so many people claim they are men and women of faith. But how can a man who does not have the capacity to receive the things of the spirit say that he is a man of faith or a woman of faith how does that happen how can you say that you are a woman of faith and you don't have the capacity to receive the things of the spirit <laughs> which faith 
Which faith are you talking about? That's why he said, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now you can understand why God cannot be pleased with you. Because as long as you do not have the capacity to receive the things of the Spirit, you cannot do the will of God. And if you cannot do the will of God, how can God be pleased with you? There's no way. There's no way. Because in the things of the Spirit is the will of God. That's where the will of God is. That is what the Father is saying. That is what the Father is doing. And when you don't have the capacity to receive it, you are a natural man. You are blind. You are wretched. You are poor. You are miserable. And you are naked. That's what Jesus was telling them in the book of Revelation. He said, you think you are rich and you are comfortable and you don't have need of anything. He said, but you don't know that you are poor. You are wretched, you are miserable, you are blind, and you are naked. That's why he said, any man that is not in Christ is already dead. Do you understand? Because when you are not doing the will of God, you are already condemned now and dead. When you don't have the capacity to receive the will of God, you are already dead. What are you living for? So life has to do. That's why he said, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because to be spiritually minded guarantees you access to the will of God. So when a man is doing the will of God, that man, the Bible says, will be diligently rewarded. Hallelujah. That's it. That's what James was even writing. He said, let us not be hearers of the word alone, but let us be do what? Doers of the word. For in doing is the blessing. Hallelujah. So a natural man only hears. <laughs> yeah? But a spiritual man not only hears, but he does what he hears. Amen? That's what qualifies as faith. So, it's not even for someone who is who says that he's a believer because being a believer already gives you access to the things of the Spirit. Amen? It gives you automatic access to the things of the Spirit. And so, there's every possibility that the things of the Spirit, you know, keeps coming your way as a believer. But what do you do with it? But because you are a natural man, you don't have the capacity to receive what is coming to you. Can you see the miserable situation of some Christians? I'm not talking about unbelievers now. I'm talking of some Christians who even though they have the capacity to receive the things of the Spirit, are not able to discern it. Even though by virtue of their declaration that they are believers, they should receive those things. But when those things come, they are not able to receive them because they cannot discern it. And so, in other words, they are like natural men. And that's why when you share this kind of information with you, they will want to argue it and tell you, but you know what? Are you saying that we should fold our arms and not do anything? But in everything that you have said, you have not suggested that in any way. Why should anybody ask you that kind of question? Are you now saying that we should fold our arms and not do anything? But all the time you were telling him, you were simply relaying what the Lord said, that we should seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that we need shall be added unto us. Why should anybody be asking you, are you now saying that we should fold our hands and not do anything? But you have not told the person to fold his or her hands or not, and not do anything. But why is it that that is the thought that keeps coming into their head. <laughs> eh? You see, they cannot receive the thing. Even though they are claiming that they belong to Christ and they are supposed to have the capacity, but they still cannot discern it. And see, still the enemy is playing games in their minds and telling them that um, the implication of them receiving this message is that Naha <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's not what the Lord is saying. The Lord wants you to trust him. Trust him because it's not about a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. He said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? So you can gain the world and lose your soul. So, But that's not what he's asking or what he's telling you. Amen? But why would anybody begin to look at it from that perspective? So your soul is not important to you. It is the physical things that you believe that you receive that is important to you. Praise the Lord. So in doing is the blessing. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. They that are coming to him must believe that he is 
And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I pray that God will give us the grace to diligently seek him. Amen. That in every situation and circumstance, we will be able to stand our ground and continue to trust him. In Jesus' name.